Welcome to The Bookish Hour with your hosts, Sarah E. Burr and J.C. Kenny. And we are live. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a very, very, very special episode of The Bookish Hour. We are here celebrating one year of being bookish. It's really, really hard to believe that a year has already gone by since we had our first Mystery March Madness when JC and I were celebrating the release of our books and this really took off and everyone has been so wonderful and we're so grateful that today we are launching our celebration to share all things bookish with you and we are joined by a fabulous panel of amazing authors that like I am starstruck just sitting on this call right now um we're in for a really really great show before we get started, I just want to make sure that for those of you who are joining us live, and maybe this is your first time stopping by our channel, uh, make sure that you are logged in to either your YouTube or Google account so that you can chat with us. We would love to take your questions during the show, um, and feel free to ask any one of us anything. We're, we're happy to answer, um, and we're in for a really great time. Um, without further ado, I am one of your hosts, Sarah Burr. And also, without further ado, I am your other host, J.C. Kenny. And um, I was doing a little Googling, and Sarah, you and I have been together longer than Cher and Greg Allman were married. So we made it to our first anniversary. They only made it to nine days. I'm dating myself, I realize, by, by that reference. But anyway, um, yeah, I am just so thrilled um, to, to, to be here, to have sent, uh, be doing this uh fun venture with Sarah. And, you know, we have four amazing, fabulous, talented, smart, creative, brilliant writers joining us tonight. So um, I am going to stop rambling and I, I'm now going to ask our panelists to introduce yourselves. Uh, please tell uh, our viewers a little bit about yourself. And we're going to start with VM Burns. Well, hello. After that intro, I'm like looking around like, who's these authors? <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you guys so much for inviting me and congratulations on your anniversary. Um, I am Valerie, I go by VM um, Ferns, and I write Cozy Mysteries. I have four, soon to be five, series, and I am, let's see, um, I live in the South but I am from the Midwest and a lot of my cozies take place in Michigan and Indiana, which is where I'm from. Woohoo! Yay. Go Hoosiers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Indianapolis. So yeah, I gotta, gotta do the shout out there. Um, so, and next, how about uh, Karina Moss? Well, hi. Um, yeah, I'm Karina Moss. I write the Cheese Shop Mystery Series. Um, I live in Connecticut and um, my, I have one son who's just gone off to college this year, so I'm in full empty nesting mode and I'm having all the feels of that. <laughs> um, but it does give me a lot more time for to concentrate on all the writing and um, marketing and everything else that goes along with it. I, unlike uh, Valerie, I uh, didn't get published until 2020. So, well, my book came out last year, but I signed the contract in 2020. So I'm kind of new at this and still three years later, you know, trying to find my footing with everything. So um, it's all exciting and fun and a lot of hard work, but, um, but I'm loving it. And I get to meet other authors that are so cool. <laughs> well, it, and it's a thrill to have you here. Um, next you. up, and next up, um, I'd like to introduce uh, the uh, one of the chicks on the case is in the house, Jennifer Chow. Jen, introduce yourself. Hey, yes. Hi, I'm Jennifer. I am one of the chicks. Um, we blog Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, chicksonthecase.com. I am a cozy mystery writer who writes cozies with heart, humor, and heritage. 
-hmm. So my latest two series are the LA Night Market Mysteries, which has a night market theme. Um, and the, the first book in that is called Death by Bubble Tea. And then the upcoming one is called Hot Pot Murder. So very food-based. There's recipes in the back. Um, my other series before that was the Sassy Cat Mysteries. And it, yes, it has a talking sassy cat. Uh, and the main protagonist is also Mimi Lee, who's a pet groomer in Los Angeles. And she runs a shop called Hollywood. So it's been a lot of fun writing cozies. I love cozies um, and mysteries. And I actually love puns too. So you could probably tell from <laughs> all the titles and descriptions. Well, it's it's so great to have you here. And last, but definitely not least by any means, um, M.A. Monin. Hi, Mary. Hi, thanks for having me. I just want to let you know, I've got my bubbly here to celebrate your anniversary. Yay. Happy Yay. anniversary, guys. Thank you. <laughs> so I write um, books and short stories. Uh, my first book is um, Death in the Aegean, and it's up for... Um, an Agatha Best First Novel Award, which uh, is right right next to Karina's book also. So we're, we're both gonna be looking at that. Um, gosh, that's about it. I live in Kansas City. I'm definitely an empty nester. I've been one for a long time. <laughs> I have two Siberian Huskies. Nice, nice. Lovely. So. Well, thank you all for that introduction, for taking time again to be with us. And so I'm going to dive into our first question. And Karina, going to start with you. Um, you've all touched on this a little bit, but if you care to talk a little bit more, um, why did you choose to write uh, cozy and or traditional mysteries as opposed to maybe any other genre? Mm. Um, well, that's kind of an easy one for me because that was for a long time almost solely what I was reading. I. I've um, always read mysteries from, you know, the time I was a child, of course, Nancy Drew and Encyclopedia Brown. And then I got into Agatha Christie and, you know, read every Agatha Christie book in the library. And so um, then my first cozy was um, Sue Grafton. She doesn't really write cozies in particular, but the traditional mystery with um, the, a female uh, protagonist. Mm -hmm. And so I um, started, you know, wanting more like that and started looking um, for that. And luckily, our library has the little um, magnifying glass on the label. And so as I was going through, I, you know, you could easily find them. And I couldn't believe when I discovered Cozy Mysteries, because this was like in the 90s, early 2000s, when it was just starting the whole subgenre of mysteries. And it was like, not only could I read the one that I loved, but there were more in the series that I could keep going back, you know? So that was um, a lot of, uh, you know, fun to read. So when I really started writing, um, I just, it was kind of an easy thing of, well, I know what I love to read. And so that's what I want to write. And so I chose the cozy. There you go. Awesome. Well, Jen, how about you? Oh, I have very similar pathway. So I love reading mysteries. Also, Agatha Christie is a big thing, um, both my mom and me. And so we used to kind of read together and trade back and forth, which was a lot of fun. And I think I just liked that, that genre. I remember in elementary school, I even wrote this um, short story that was a mystery. And actually, I wrote it and I was like, oh, this is great, except I couldn't figure out the ending. So then I like, just stuck in this twist ending, um, which the teacher still loved. So I got an A on the paper. Nice. Um, yeah, so then I, I don't know, I just um, really gravitated to genre for for a while. I wasn't sure if actually I could do the like the whole who done it with all the clues, but I really, since I enjoyed reading it so much, I was like, you know what? Why don't I give it a try? And, and here I am. That's so cool. And we have all benefited so much from the fact that you did give it a try because your books are wonderful. So, Thank yeah. You. So, okay, Mary, you're up. Tell us why traditional cozy mysteries. Pretty, pretty much the same. I, um, I, I love the puzzle of the traditional mysteries or the cozies. Um, I think they're very similar. Uh, the distinction is, you know, very similar, but anyway, I, I really love that puzzle and I kind of feel like, I'm playing a game with the reader, you know, tossing out a clue, see if they get it. I, I like that. And I also like the, um, 
when I read mysteries, you know, traditionals or cozies, they have, uh, I like that routine of their, their lives. They, they all have a routine and it's very familiar and comforting. And if life is either stressful or maybe even dull during a cold winter, long cold winter, you know, it's very comforting to go to that familiar world and just escape to it. Yeah, absolutely. I hear you so much. And I've told this story other times, but I'll throw it out here real quick um, that I remember asking my mom when I was like 10 years old. She was a huge Agatha Christie fan. She read her and Nio Marsh, all of the, the giants from the from the golden age. And I asked her, it's like, mom, why are you reading these horrible books with murder and death in it? And she said, it's not about that. It's about the puzzle. And 40 some odd years later, that stuck with me. So, uh, so Valerie, how about you? What, what got you into the cozy traditional genre? So I think it's very similar to what the other ladies have said. You know, I read mysteries growing up. I love cozies. I am a little, I guess I'm just a coward. So anything with too much graphic violence, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to stay up all night, you know, watching religious TV and singing hymns. So I am, you know, not going for the graphic, you know, murders. I love the puzzle. And after years of reading and, you know, just enjoying cozy mysteries, I, oh, I had this list of, I wish I could find a book about, I wish there was a book about, I wish somebody would write a cozy mystery about, and, you know, after mm -hmm. like 20 years, that list was real long and I realized nobody was writing it. So I thought, well, what if I tried? So I think that's how I got started. But it was just because I loved the genre so much. I loved reading those. I am mm -hmm. a huge Agatha Christie fan. So it really just sort of flowed. If, if I was going to write anything, that's what I was going to write. And mm -hmm. sorry about the poodles. Oh, do dear. not ever no no no, no apology enemies. necessary yeah JC, um, well, i'm gonna pop yeah. in real quick with a reader question we have oh, some a... great chatter in the chat right yeah. now hello everybody thank you so much for being here um we've got a great group of people um please feel free to ask us questions as we go along we've got a question from sherry northcutt who it would like to know how do you plot your books? Do you start with the murder in mind and who done it? So I'll let you think about that for a few minutes or not a few minutes, a few moments. <laughs> and then Mary, would you like to kickstart us off on that question? Sure. Um, well, I'm a plotter. So I, I, I think I start with the murder first and I always know who done it. I can't really progress until I know who done it. Um, and that was proven to me with I'm working on book three right now. And I was kept stalling and stalling because I couldn't figure out who done it. And I finally got it pinned down. And now I can go through and finish the rest. So, Excellent. Yes. <laughs> Valerie, so on the you? exact opposite, I do not <laughs> plot. I wish wow. I could plot when I grow up. One day I am going to be a plotter. <laughs> I strive for that. And um, I've tried and i i just can't do it i am a pantser so i usually will have an idea of who i want to kill and um you know so i have a full-time job too so um my cohort when people make me mad i kill them that's my <laughs> stress reliever so i have a long list of people to kill so i know who i want to kill and depending on how angry i am at you will be how gruesome your death is. So um, if I'm just a little miffed, you might just get poisoned. Um, <laughs> so um, I know who who I'm killing. I have a rough idea of what's going to happen. But I really love the characters and just getting in their heads and trying to figure out who they are. And I love just dropping them in weird situations and seeing how they work their way out and a lot of times i'm surprised i'm like oh i didn't see that coming and you know sometimes i got to step away and figure out now how are we going to get out of this and you know it's just it makes it fun for me and so i i think 
that hopefully the readers, I'm, I'm right there with them. When they get to that point in the book and it's like, this is who the killer is, then, you know, I'm like, I'm finding that out too. This is who the killer is. I often start with one person and by either midway or two thirds through, I'm like, ooh, they're not the killer. This is the killer. And then, you know, <laughs> I, I change it. So um, that's that's my process. That's impressive because I I just I can't even imagine. There's so many moving parts that I need an outline. Mm -hmm. Now it's a it's a sketchy one, and I I veer from it, but it's like the spine of it where I when I go too far off, and I'm like because invariably in the middle of you know writing your book, you panic, like, oh my God, why am I doing this? Oh, did I, you know, and then I, I can go back to it and look at, you know, everything that I have and say, oh no, okay, that's why I did this. Okay. I knew there was a reason, you know, and so I, I have to, um, I have to do it that way. In my last book, I was very rushed to write book four, not the book that's coming out now, but the book that I'm, uh, doing my editor revisions on right now. And, um, I had a lot less time to write that one. And so I had outlined it and then I couldn't quite figure out um, about the last um, third or quarter of the book. And so I just thought, oh, you know, when I get there, maybe I'll figure it out. I will never do that again, because like I said, it's like a dance where every everything has to happen in the right way, in a certain way for that end reveal. and. So that was just so stressful on me and I, I managed it, but I'll, I'll never do that again. I, I am an outliner and maybe when I grow up someday and, uh, I, you know, and I'll decide I'll have fun with writing because it's not so much on those occasions and I'll be able to be a pantser, but not today. <laughs> Today's not that day. Wow, you are all amazing. Uh, I am actually right in the middle. <laughs> so I am not quite a plotter, not quite a pantser, I'm a little bit of a planter. So I, I generally have it outlined and I have all the suspects and they all have, you know, potential killing capabilities. But I I think I feel like I've done it all. I've done it where I thought I knew the person and then it turned out to be like totally somebody different. Um, and I've also written like halfway and been like, oh, there's a twist. Uh, and I've also done it where I've plotted. So I think I'm kind of like all a mix of whatever works for that particular story. That's what happens. Uh, I, I would say, though, with the slight addition that because my publisher asked me for a synopsis, I try to be more of a plotter <laughs> so that I can turn <laughs> that into them. My, my editor would <laughs> like me to be a plotter and he requests a synopsis. And I think after, you know, all these years, he's sort of just, you know, given up and he'll realize that he's going to get, you know, some detail on the parts that I know. And then I might do a page and a half on describing a sunset or somebody's dress. That's just for the synopsis. And, and then I'm like, and then she investigates the crime and they, and they figure out that, you know, Jennifer Chow was the murderer. <laughs> and and it's like Twist. okay <laughs> but he now i've noticed on the back they don't put who um they don't put names because those will change <laughs> before i finish so they stop doing that because it's just you know it's funny he, he's gotten so they, into a groove valerie we <laughs> actually have a couple follow-up questions for you um, uh -oh. one is who what are your dog's names our chat members would very much mm -hmm. like to know the names of of the cuties on your lap right now. I am so sorry. I am trying. If I let this the little one down, she's gonna bark. So oh, that's, no, they that's... they are the stars of the show. <laughs> this oh is Kensington, and yes, I named her after my publisher. So <laughs> Kensington, I call her Kenzie. She is eight, and she is a toy poodle. And the <laughs> all in motion. This is my puppy. Well, she's three now. This is Chloe. And um, I, I was sharing with uh, Jim that I got her at the start of the pandemic and she learned that if she barks when I start talking, she was getting a treat. But now she's chunky 
and she's got to lose some weight. So I'm trying not to just feed her tre treats every few minutes. So that's why we're wrestling here. <laughs> And we have a, a question from actually two different people, um, Regina Williams, and let's see, Martha's Magical Mystery Class is also asking, if you are not plotting out your mysteries, how do you write two separate mysteries in your mystery bookshop series without getting them confused in the story? <laughs> if you notice <laughs> how this works, usually the the contemporary mystery kind of goes along and then Sam's confused. And this is my mystery bookshop series. And she's like, writing allows my subconscious mind to come through. So I'm going to go off into the British countryside and I'm going to write about 1938, 1939, Great Britain. And she writes, and it's, there is a parallel between what's happening in the British historic mystery that she's writing and the, mystery that she's trying to solve in her real life real like she's a real character or something you know right but you know it's they're parallel and so as she writes it helps her and me work through how to solve the mystery that she's in so okay it's been working for me so it seemed like a good idea at the time when <laughs> i thought about it i thought oh i would love to read a book with two mysteries this would be really and then i thought I got to write two mysteries. I got to solve two mysteries in every book. I didn't think that through at the beginning. If I had, it probably would have been a whole different story. But yeah, I just sort of, you know, sometimes I have to step aside. But usually as I'm writing the British Historic Cozy, it helps me solve the other one. Well, that is that 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 is that's amazing that you're able to do that, Valerie. And uh, speaking of British historical mysteries, you know that kind of brings uh, um, up an interesting topic of setting and location. You know, because you all write stories with vastly different settings. Um, can you tell us a little bit about why you picked, you know, the setting or the settings that you did? Um, Jen, how about you? How about you lead off first? Oh, sure. Well, that's probably easy because, you know, they say write what you know, and I live in the Los Angeles area. So I figured, hey, wouldn't it be great to write about SoCal? It makes it a lot easier for me to do research. And I just really love being in this region and putting in the diversity in the book that's really important to me. So I was able to capture that. And I think that's what I enjoy about the series. And of course, there's a lot, I make a lot of food references and there's always a lot of good food in this area. So I like to pop that in there. Um, and then even in my the Night Market series, I kind of did this thing where I add like hidden sites around LA. So kind of like spots that you might not know of as much, like there's a Korean French hotel um, around here. And so the, like kind of some fun, like almost Easter eggs for people. That is so cool. The Easter egg, the Easter egg concept is so much fun. Um, and, you know, because if you're, if you catch it as the reader, that's great. And if you don't, no big deal. You know, it's still a great story. Um, Mary, you went a little bit far afield, relatively speaking, with your your death in the Aegean, taking us all the way to uh, to Greece. Talk about that. Well, I, um, I've been fascinated uh, with Greece ever since I was a teenager in Germany. My dad was in the army and every summer he would go to Crete, the island of Crete uh, for military exercises so and he'd come back with um greek vases and these leather sandals and flaccatis and i was just fascinated so um i finally got to go about 10 years ago my husband and i went and we went to um the island of santorini and when we were touring the archaeological site of the bronze age town of akrotiri the guide told us that they had discovered um, a single gold statue of an ibex. It was buried under the floor of one of the buildings. And that's the only gold item that's been found there. And boy, that got my imagination <laughs> going. I thought, ooh, okay. Gold, you know, newly discovered gold statues and all these narrow, winding, dark streets. And if you're a tourist, you're surrounded by, by strangers. You know, anything can happen. And you know, I just ran with it. It's like, I've got to set a murder here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> well, you knocked it out of the park. I felt when I was reading that book, like I was right there. It, it was just, you know, your description of the setting and, and the whole, you know, the area was just amazing. So, um, so a little Thank bit you. closer to home for me, at least, um, Valerie, you set your mysteries a little kind of more Midwestern ish kind of talk about that a little bit for us, if you wouldn't mind. I am from, um, Northwest Indiana, South Bend, Indiana. So um, a little further north and usually colder than where you're from. And <laughs> it, and I lived there the majority of my life. I also lived in Southwest Michigan and it's beautiful. Um, it's, you know, right by Lake Michigan. So at the time when I started the Mystery Bookshop series, I was living in Southwest Michigan. And I, you know, to piggyback on what Jen was saying, I throw some Easter eggs in there. So I've had people who write and they're like, oh, is North Harbor, Michigan really, you know, Benton Harbor, Michigan? It's like, yeah, yeah. And then my new series that I said in New Bison, Michigan. And I don't know, I crack myself up with some of these names. I don't know if people get it or not, but then I'll get an email and somebody's like, is that New Buffalo? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. So, and I think I, I made a reference to Notre Dame and I said, you know, I think I called it Jesus and Mary University. So, you know, sometimes people get it and sometimes they don't, but I have fun while I'm writing it. So that's why I did it. Well, that is so cool. Well, how about you, Karina? Why, tell us a little bit about your settings and why. So uh, unlike Jennifer, that would be have been smart to, you know, write what you know. But um, no. So when I was looking uh, for where to set the cheese shop mystery, I was just doing some Internet research and I found a cheese trail that goes all the way up California. Now this is just basically a, a map of all the creameries, dairy farms, cheese mm -hmm. shops all along uh, California, that if you're a tourist, you can go and you can go to, you know, you'll know where to go to get samples and learn about cheese and cheese making. And I just thought that was fascinating. And so then I liked the idea of with uh, Sonoma Valley, my uh, fictional, town of Yarrow Glen is in the Sonoma Valley. And I liked the idea of that being known for its wine, of course, wine and cheese go together. But I, I liked that if it was a, a town with its roots uh, in dairy farming and my main character was going to have a cheese shop there, that that's kind of like makes the town more of an underdog where they're surrounded by all these she-she, you know, vineyard towns and wine towns. And so, um, so I liked that parallel. So that's why I kind of, um, I, I decided on that. And I have yet, I've traveled a lot and I've yet to actually be in Northern California, but um, Mark Baker, one of the bloggers, he grew up there and he thought that I had also lived there. So that made me feel really good that, you know, I was getting it right. So uh, let, let's hope. <laughs> Well, just real quick, as an aside, I think not only are your you did you do you get your books right, your titles you just totally knock it out of the park out of the park with your titles. Mm -hmm. um, just real quick, could you tell everybody your titles and um, do you get credit for them or did somebody help you with those? Uh, yeah, so um, actually, my editor uh, helps me with them. Um, we kind of go back and forth, but she um, is like the pun queen every email we have she has cheese puns throughout it like you know she just throws them out and when i was talked to my uh publicists and some other people from saint martin's uh, last year at malice they were saying that she does that at work do they have the best time with her puns so anyway the first one is cheddar off dead and as mary had said this one um has been nominated for an Agatha Award um, for f best first novel. And then the second one is Gone for Gouda. And um, yeah, and oh, and it's got a little white dog there too. Oops, wrong one. Um, and then the third one that's coming out at the end of March is Curds of Prey. And, um, so yeah, so they're all very uh, cheesy, but it does take us a while to come up with it. We do bounce a lot of things off and they have to, you know, all kind of be, similar and short and it's not always easy the fourth book coming out that you can pre-order that comes out next september is um case of the blues it's about a blue cheese a very valuable and sought after blue cheese so 
that's what we have so far. I think, you know, when I finally um, finish writing books, it might be because we've run out of titles. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All the cheese. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, unfortunately, we're almost kind of, we're not almost running out of time, but it is halfway through the hour. So time flies when you're having fun. Um, at this point, we want to let everybody know that in celebration of the one year anniversary, we do have uh, Sarah and I are doing a little giveaway to thank everybody for hanging out with us, not only tonight, Thursday night, as well as hanging with us for the whole year. Sarah, you want to tell folks about it? Yes. So we are doing a book bundle giveaway along with a $20 Amazon gift card. And um, so to enter into our giveaway, this is going to be spanning across both evenings. Um, so our winner is going to be announced at the end of our Thursday night show. So if you can come back and join us for a second night, please do. Um, in order to enter our giveaway, we need you to type in a very, very secret word into the YouTube chat um, so that we can enter you into the raffle and feel free to keep, you can enter it throughout the show. Um, you don't have to enter it in right now. We'll give you time um, throughout the episode uh, to enter in, or if you need to log into YouTube to do it, make sure um, you go ahead and get that set up. But the secret word is bookish. Surprise, surprise. Um, so if you'd like to enter, uh, please make sure uh, you type in bookish into the chat. And before we segue back to our prepared questions, I just want to let Karina know that uh, Mark Baker has joined the chat and says that he absolutely loves your titles and enjoys getting to head home fictionally in your books. So um, Thank you, very, uh, um, he's loves the puns. I think we all do. I think as a, as a cozy mystery writer, you kind of have to love puns by default. Um, we had a, another question from Sherry Northcutt. Uh, do you taste test your recipes for those of you who share recipes with your readers? Um, do you taste test them? Yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Many variations. <laughs> not all of them. I have to be honest. I'm not a good cook and I try to make mine as simple as possible. So those I do. But um, when it there's been a couple that come down to the wire where I need to send them in and I'm just like. <laughs> but I've had and when people say they're going to make them, I, I get a little nervous. But so far, so good. Everybody's loved the few that I've seen on Instagram. They've posted that they've made them. And thank goodness they've all come out well so far. So oh, that's too funny. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have to be honest. <laughs> so, um, you know, one of the things that Karina uh, mentioned is that she is uh, up for an Agatha award, award this year at the Malice Domestic Mystery Fan Conference. Um, Mary is up for the same award. Um, and Valerie and Jennifer, you both have been nominated for, for awards. So, you know, you not only is that uh, an indicator of your amazing talent, it's, you know, people love your writing. So, um, I've never been nominated for an award. Um, so yes. what I want to know. Yes. 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 There we go. I want to know what it's, what's it like? Tell us, you know, you, give us the deets. What was it like when you got that either phone call or email or, you know, you know, fill us in. Cause that, that's, uh, that must've been so cool. Mary, how about you lead us off? Okay. Um, so I was uh, downstairs 5.00 AM. I'm a morning person with my coffee local news on and I opened up my phone to look at the emails and um, I saw that it was from Agatha Ward nominations and all I could read was hello MA it's a pleasure to tell you and I just stared at it and I thought oh my god and I started saying it out loud out loud oh my god oh my god oh my god <laughs> and I was I did that for about five minutes. I was afraid to to actually click on the email just in case I was wrong. <laughs> My husband came down with his coffee about five minutes later. And he, when he came down, I jumped up and down, hugged him. And then I opened up the email and it confirmed, of course, that yes. So it, it was thrilling. I was just filled with a glow of happiness. You know, I'm, I still am. I'm enjoying it. I understand when they say it's you know, it's an honor just to be nominated. I'm loving it. <laughs> well, that's so cool. And just remind folks uh, the name of the title that was nominated and what it was nominated for. 
Oh, there's um, Death in the Aegean, and mm -hmm. it's the Agatha Best First Novel Award is the nomination. Very cool. Very cool. Um, Jen, how about you? Now, you are kind of one of these big shots. You've been nominated for a few things. So, you know, um, if, if you want to choose one or more stories, you know, all things are good. Yeah, how much time do we have for all her nominations? <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, it's always, it is definitely an honor. Um, so I'm up for, well, Death by Bolt is up for a lefty award in Best Humorous. And it's, it's so much fun because I, you know, from the West Coast, so it's it's an honor for me to like have that community to recognize my work and and that people think it's funny, so that <laughs> that's great too. Um, and then also it's up for the Agatha this year as well um, as contemporary, and yeah. so I that was that kind of blew me away too because I I same as Mary I was like oh it's an email and then I thought wait. Wait, what is it saying? And I remember clicking on it and thinking, did they send it to the wrong, you know, there's a lot of Jennifer's out there. So I'm like, did they send it to the wrong person? Is it me? And I'm looking at the title, like double checking. And so I think I was just so, so much in shock, you know, because as we talked about, you know, big, uh, you know, Agatha Christie fan. And so obviously the Agatha Award means a lot just to be nominated. So definitely just. I think it's walking around in that daze. That's how, how I usually react. Yeah, very cool, very cool. Um, Valerie, care to share your story? So um, my first book um, was nominated for an Agatha and I found out, I was on the phone driving home from work and just about, you know, had an accident because <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I mean, I am a huge Agatha Christie fan and I, knew others had been um, contacted when they were nominated. And, you know, I didn't get a, you know, a phone call. So I thought, well, I wasn't nominated. Okay. And so when I had somebody call and say congratulations, and I'm like, congratulations for what? And so then when I heard, I'm like, whoa, I better pull over. So, <laughs> um, but I think the most surprised or, you know, just the biggest thrill was when my short story was nominated for the Edgar um, last year. I did not even realize that the anthology had been sent in um, that my short story was a part of. And so, you know, it's not like I knew it was even an option. And so I was actually reading the list and making name, you know, writing down the names of my friends who I knew had been nominated so I could send an email. So I'm just going through the list as it appeared in the, you know, email and I get to, you know, the Vermeer conspiracy and I'm like, the Vermeer there's two books called the two short stories <laughs> with the same name? This is ridiculous. I, what a coincidence. And then I look over and I see V and Burns and I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> I can't believe, I mean, I literally, I called my sister, I couldn't even talk. I was like, but you don't understand. Cozies don't get nominated for editors. <laughs> Are you kidding me? And so it took a lot. It was very, very much an honor. And I was just thrilled. And, and I got nominated. That sh same short story got also nominated for the Anthony. So last year was a very exciting year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, real quick, where can we find what what anthology is your story in? So um, the Vermeer Conspiracy is in an anthology called Midnight Hour, and it is um, it was put out by Crooked Lane, and it is twenty stories from um, uh, writer crime writers of color, and mm -hmm. um, Tracy Clark also had a um, short story that got nominated. So that was a lot of fun. So it, it's it been really, really um, a great experience. The only short story I've ever written, and I think I'm going to stop there. Yeah. <laughs> High point. Start and stop and stop. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Karina, you're up. Um, so yeah, like uh, Mary I and, and Jennifer, um, I got an email and um, I also was not expecting it at all so it was in the morning and uh, you know I was gobsmacked I mean just like 
that was something I, you know, uh, when everybody was saying, oh, my book is up for consideration, I did that too on Facebook and Instagram. But honestly, I thought with all the new books that, you know, and, and when you're in the new, um, when you're a debut author, you kind of pay attention to the other debut authors and read their stuff and, you know, you kind of get to know them. And so with all of the great ones that came out and all the people that were known, especially too, like, like I said, I'm in the quiet corner of Connecticut. And although I I am in touch with and, and feel friendly with a lot of authors, I, you know, I don't really ever get to see anybody in person. I go to the one conference, like I said, Malice Domestic and um and last year was my first year there even because you know obviously this is my first book so um i just completely didn't expect it so it was it was thrilling it really was and um as the others have said especially it being named after agatha christie i mean just to be named in the same breath with her just have something you know written uh you know i'm gonna read it in stone i think um in the same breath as agatha christie is just it's like a childhood dream kind of full circle thing it's it's wild and wonderful and it is a, such a cliche as mary said to say oh it's an honor to be nominated but Truly, um, I, I feel like you know I I had the two I had the Sally Field moment. They like me. They really like me. <laughs> and the you know it's just an honor to be nominated because truly it is. So, well, well, thank you all for for sharing those those stories because they were wonderful and and so deserving, absolutely deserving. And you know it just and, and um, you know just a reminder, folks, if you haven't yet. You got plenty of time to go out and buy books from Valerie, Karina, Mary, and Jennifer because you're, you're in for a treat, let me tell you. Um, well, I tell you what, my time is running short, so I am going to ask one final question. Um, you know, can you tell us a little bit, um, is there anything in particular you want readers to take away from your stories? We love to tell a great tale. We want to entertain folks. Um, but is there any like uh, that anything in particular that you hope also comes out in in your writing? Um, Valerie, how about we start with with you and the puppy dogs with this one? <laughs> so um, I guess the main thing is just I try to have intelligent. Um, protagonists who are, you know, it, it stretches the imagination to have an amateur sleuth solving crime anyway. And so I try to make sure that they're also somewhat practical. So I, I think that's one of the things that I try to do in my books. And then also, um, I, I find that I want people to just enjoy just realize life is too short not to have fun. Don't take this stuff too seriously. We make up a lot of stuff and, you know, it's just should be fun. So that's primarily, I think, what I um, strive for. Not awesome. too deep. Very cool. Uh, Jen, how about you? For me, I think I want my readers to come away with a sense of hope. So there's always, you know, the puzzle, but then the end, everything gets solved and there's a happy ending and justice is served. And sometimes, you know, we don't get that in real life. So I'm hoping my books convey that and also give them a sense of optimism, I think, to readers. And then the other piece of it is um, I have Asian American main characters. So I like to put, you know, like cultural tidbits and things in there. So I'm hoping that readers will come away with like a little bit more understanding about culture and, um, and food <laughs> as a specialty in my books. And I just have fun reading them. Very cool. Absolutely. Uh, Karina? Um, yeah, I think uh, for sure I want my readers to feel the way I have always felt since a child um, reading a good book, and especially a cozy where you're in a, a series where, it, you know, you're there and it's just a sense of comfort you you know you say especially when you return to the second book and the third book and on and on it's like you're immediately back with old friends in a town you want to be back in and that's the way I always feel when I read a good cozy and have always felt uh when I read a good book from the time I was a child and I think that's why I always wanted to be a writer in the first place so I really want people to just have that sense of comfort and then you know not want it to end but of course race to the end and then can't wait to read the next one you know and then immediately sink into that again and then also you know 
go out and try some new cheese. <laughs> <laughs> well, in addition to trying a new cheese, as I think I've already said, for one thing, I know I want to go to uh, spend some time in uh, the Mediterranean and, and Greece. So other than getting folks to go travel, Mary, what, what, what do you want folks to take from your books? Uh, well, in addition to the entertainment, um, I, I do hope that they do have a sense of the excitement of foreign travel. Um, and then I also would hope um, that they come away with an awareness of, of the value of the knowledge that artif artifacts and uh, archaeological sites can um, give to us, you know, the vast amount of knowledge. And, and just a, a small thing is that I hope they realize Atlantis is not real. <laughs> Man. All right. Well, whatever. The has been burst. Yes. Um, well, I do just want to say one thing real quick, Mary. Uh, shout out to you because without spoiling anything in the first book, Mary's pro protagonist has her passport stolen. And when that happens, I was just like, I, I would like have been, if that had happened to me when I was um, abroad, I would just be like curling up in a corner. Like I would, you know, that is like, oh my goodness. So anyway, kudos to you for putting that in there with the adventure of travel. So I'm done. I'm going to be quiet. Sarah, over to you for the rapid fire. All right. Perfect. And before we get started with our rapid fire questions, we do have one more reader question from our chat. And this is for everyone. Do you like to put a little romance in your book for your main character? Do you like writing it or do you feel that like you kind of have to put it in there? So Karina, how about you start us off on that? I do like it. I didn't think I would when my uh, editor suggested it. I was like, all right. And but now, especially because you have a series to kind of have that very slow burn. Um, I like it a lot. It's fun. Perfect. Mary, what about you? Um, oh, I think it's uh, absolutely important. I think a little bit of flirting improves any story. <laughs> <laughs> Valerie, what's your your view on romance? Oh, yes, I'm for it. <laughs> and Jen? I'm, I'm all for romance. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of mixed, honestly. Mm -hmm. So um, so there definitely is romance in in the Sassy Cat series. There's, there's a relationship and I like it and I appreciate it. And I liked fleshing out their the characters. So that was great. And then in the night market, there's not as much. It's like a backseat. So it's kind of like a hint of romance. But I do remember okay so this is sorry kids but um one of my kids read my book and they're like mom you know i hate to tell you you just you just can't do the romance stuff <laughs> so I'm, I'm like oh i don't know maybe i shouldn't add romance to the books right <laughs> so you know take it for granted all, I guess. that's too funny i will freely admit that romance is like the part i struggle with the most so i'm always in awe of people who can like just effortlessly incorporate it and so kudos to you all for going after romance yes. full throttle. Um, so for our rapid fire questions for to kind of wrap up our panel, to have some fun, uh, fun times here to end our hour. It's almost, almost time. Um, we are going to keep it fast. So we're going to go in the same order throughout these questions. And our order is going to be Valerie, Karina, Jen, and Mary. So hopefully I can remember what that order is for our next question. So for to begin, I would like to know, is your favorite type of sleuth in your in reading books an amateur sleuth or a professional sleuth? Valerie. Amateur. Amateur. Amateur as well. Amateur. Professional. Professional? No, we like to keep it, <laughs> we like to keep it uh, exciting. And yeah, I think that you know, they, all, everybody has their, uh, you know, you can learn so much from a professional. I know that when I am reading that I've just learned so much about how law enforcement works through the eyes of a professional sleuth, and it can help me in my own personal writing. And I love amateurs too. If you could share with us your favorite mystery movie or TV show, it could be either or. Um, any Agatha Christie mysteries? <laughs> Um, I'm going to say Memento, which was a great mystery from like 
20 plus years ago, um, where a man had short-term memory loss and his wife had been murdered. And so every time his memory like resets, he has all these tattoos and these post-it notes and everything because he's trying to figure it out. And it takes him a little while to remember that he's trying to figure it out. And then once he does, he keeps piecing. So it's almost like when it shows starting from the ending to the beginning of the movie, even though that's not the way it's, I'm confusing it, but it's really good. If you happen to be able to see it somehow, it's called Memento. And that's always stuck with me. I haven't seen it in a long time, but I loved it. Putting it on my list. <laughs> Jen, what I'm about you? Go, I'm going to go with Knives Out. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> that's, a good one. that's a good one. I like uh, Murder Mystery, the one with Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah. That was such a fun setting. It was fun. That was I, I do I do love the setting of that one. Um, when you are writing, what is the must-have food or drink to get you through a writing session? Coffee. Diet Coke, without a doubt. Mm. Hot tea, probably green tea. Green tea, okay. Coffee. Coffee for the win. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and because we like to keep things very positive on the book of shower when not if you sell enough books to retire where would you like to be retiring to what's your dream place to live um any place where it's warm and i can see water yes <laughs> Yeah, I have to echo Valerie on that. And I think for the first like six months to a year, I would try, you might know that I'm going to say this, Sarah, I might try to retire on um, like a cruise ship for like, at least like, you know, a good amount of time. I, that won't be a, you know, forever thing. I wouldn't be able to do that. But I would love to see how long I could be out there before I got sick of it because I never do. I feel like you could be like, the poster person for cruise for cruises because <laughs> you write about the amazing retreat you had um and oh my gosh it was just so much fun to follow you as you went through that i'm so glad you got to do it yeah jennifer where would you yeah. like to retire to um okay i think either hawaii or um uh, i would stay in socal but like near the beach like right off the beach like one of those cottages <laughs> perfect and i would like to go to greece Mm -hmm. I would love to retire on Crete, stay there by the ocean. I'd love to be your best friend, Mary. <laughs> you're, welcome. you're all welcome. Come on. Soon, when, not, not if, but when I do. Yes. yes <laughs> you're all there. welcome. So we need to all put that on our vision boards so that we yes. can get you guys to where you where you want to be. For the yes. 20th anniversary of the yes, Book of the Book of Shower. Of the book <laughs> of shower. Hopefully we'll all be dialing in from our dream homes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. All right. And so to kind of wrap things up for this wonderful, wonderful evening that we have had, thank you guys again for being here. It has been an absolute delight to chat with you, to like listen to your mm -hmm. wisdom and learn from you and just be entertained by everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for our viewers who have not already connected with you, um, either on social media or on your newsletter, where can they find you? online and where are you going to be popping up next if people can come see you in person possibly valerie you want to um sure know? i'm i'm on um the probably the i'm on facebook a lot i'm on instagram and um check out my website and sign up for my newsletter that's where you're gonna probably stay most current so vmburns.com um, so it's KarinaMossAuthor.com is my website, and if you scroll down and subscribe to my free monthly newsletter, um, you'll be kept up to date. There'll be giveaways and all kinds of fun stuff um, that are on there, and lots of uh, cheese, fun cheese stuff too is on there. Um, and I will be, um, you'll see some blogs from me this month on Drew's books, uh, book musings, and then I will be on um, John Valeri's uh, Central Booking podcast um, next month. So I will say yeah. Karina's Instagram is like full of cheese pictures and it just like soothes my soul. So <laughs> I love looking at cheese. Yeah, come, come to my social media. I'm on Instagram and, Team and cheese Facebook. all the way. Yeah. 
Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Jen, what about uh, you? I, I'm on Facebook and Instagram mainly. Um, it's under at Jen J. Chow. And then my website is jenniferjchow.com. And I also have a newsletter, so you can definitely subscribe there. Um, and also events on my new, on my website as well. And I'll be in person at Left Coast Crime, Malice Domestic, and BoucherCon this year. Wow, well, yes. the trifecta. Yeah. Um, so I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I don't have a newsletter, but I do have a website, mamonin.com. I'll be at uh, Malice Domestic, and voucher con and at the end of this month i'm going to a little smaller festival books along the tesh in new iberia louisiana I started that um because of the popularity of uh james lee burke's dave robichaud novels that's dave robichaud's hometown <laughs> and my husband's <laughs> so well very that's cool, cool. You know, we've got a couple more minutes, so just real quick, uh, another quick lightning round. Uh, can you give us a quick blurb of what book you have coming up next? How about, Valerie, we start with you. Um, the second book in my Baker Street Mystery series, Murder is a Piece of Cake, comes out in June. Nice. Karina? Um, I have Curds of Prey. Uh, it comes out on March 28th. You can pre-order now. And um, ebook, paperback, audio book also. Um, and so it's a third book in the cheese shop mystery series. Okay. Jen. I have the second book in the night market series. It's called hot pot murder and it comes out June 6th. And of course it's about hot pot, a dinner that goes very awry when one of the guests, um, ends up dead. Oh, okay. Mary. And I've got the second in the intrepid traveler series coming out death on the grand canal. And Stephanie ends up in Venice on the black market trail mm -hmm. of a sapphire and emerald uh, Renaissance pendant called the Borgia Peacock. Wow, very cool, man. Um, okay, viewers, you've got your you you got your assignments. Four books coming out soon. Get them, read them, review them, love them because these four ladies who have joined us here are absolutely lovely, and we can't thank you enough for celebrating Sarah and my. Uh, one year anniversary of the bookish hour so thank you all very much yeah. sarah thank you yes again this has been such a treat and thank you for sharing your time with us to our viewers who joined us live thank you for being here thank you for sharing yep. your love of all things bookish with us if you haven't already um, popped into the chat to enter our book bundle giveaway make sure you type in the word bookish to get entered in and again we will be announcing our winner at the end of our Thursday show, which will be kicking off at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's going to be another wonderful night. If anything like tonight, uh, it was uh, simply fabulous. Thank yes. you again for being here with us. We will see you on Thursday. Stay bookish, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks, folks. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you.